You could be the key to helping change lives. Join a clinical trial with Nucleus Network in Minneapolis and be a part of groundbreaking research. Nucleus Network has been conducting clinical research studies for over 15 years. Right now, Nucleus Network is looking for people with moderate to severe kidney impairment to participate in their upcoming clinical studies. If eligible, your participation could help advance research of investigational medications that are being developed to treat a variety of medical conditions. Nucleus Network is offering compensation ranging from two to seven thousand dollars for study participation time. If you or someone you know has kidney disease, check your eligibility for Nucleus Network's upcoming studies now at nucleusnetwork.com. Your participation matters. Learn more about Nucleus at nucleusnetwork.com. Again, nucleusnetwork.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori Watson and the co-host of Foreplay. I'm your co-host, George Fowler, former firefighter, your couple's therapist who loves to talk about sex. Woo, let's discuss everything about the best sexual techniques to building your emotional intimacy, which is really necessary for great sex. We bring sound, concrete tools to reframe your relationship problems and learn how to fall in love again and feel desire. Listen to Foreplay Radio on the iHeart app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, everybody. Welcome. And thank you for listening to this episode of Marriage Therapy Radio. My name is Zach. I'm here with Laura. Let's see. Rebecca and I just got back from Ireland, which was amazing. I'm going to tell you all about it in an upcoming episode, probably next week. But I will tell you that um, we loved our time there. It was really good for our relationship. We had a lot of uh, very uh, good and poignant conversation, including conversations about pans which will become important over the next half an hour or so. But yeah, it's good to be back. Uh, Last week, I wished happy birthday to everyone that we know that was born in the beginning of October. Now, I want to wish happy birthday to Marriage Therapy Radio. This is our sixth anniversary. We started in the middle of October in 2017. So uh, it's really fun. Thank you all for coming along for the ride. If you would like to give us a birthday present, please go over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review. We're still climbing the ladder toward 1,000 reviews, which is our benchmark. I think we're somewhere around 625. Also, uh, this is pretty much your last chance to register for the October intensive workshop that Laura and I are doing in a couple of weeks. It's Friday night and Saturday. It's going to be a great time. We look forward to having you. The more I think about those workshops, the more I get excited about teaching them. So I'm looking forward to uh, having you join us. For now, however, we are talking about pans uh, in this episode. We're also talking about dishes, China specifically. Um, and kind of how we navigate some of that uh, in our house. A very specific tool called the feedback wheel that I'm excited about that I've been using quite a bit both with clients and in my own relationships, including on my trip to Ireland, but more on that later. This is a very cool conversation. Stick around. I didn't tell you what I'm doing. I know you're getting ready to go on vacation. Well, technically I'm back from vacation. Oh, that's if right. If you're listening to this At podcast. At this point, you've had a really great time in Ireland, Ireland not yes. Scotland. It was very green. Uh-huh. Yep. Rainy? It was very green. Was it rainy? Yeah. Probably. I bought a raincoat. <laughs> I, I took a raincoat to Ireland. That's so great. in case Are you it did packed? rain. No. I have oh. about two more days of like literally nonstop work. And then tomorrow afternoon I get to clock out and I'm so excited about it. I have not clocked out of work in many years. Many, many years. Really? So, well, yeah. Because even when you go to Cabo, you still see clients. Totally. Yeah. On, and I've been working for about 20 days straight. I've done two consecutive marathon weekends. Holy so I moly. did marathon weekends. over the. So I've worked every single day since Memorial Day. Wow. Um, I've done client work every single day Yeah. since Memorial Day. Yeah. That's, um. do you get burned out when you work like that, that hard? Uh, I think I've gotten better at pacing myself mm-hmm. for sure. Um, and I find like little self-care things. Like I built, uh, I built a Millennium Falcon out of Legos. Is that so, okay, you guys? Zach, you sent me a photograph and you go, oops, not for you. And I think yeah, that you were intentionally trying to send it no. as like, say something no, totally. about my Millennium Falcon. Say something. No, I haven't. However, this is the finished one. I'll show you a picture of the finished one. Which is too bad that I'm getting pictures of Legos accidentally sent to me because I'd rather have nudes, not of you, it's, but like nudes look, accidentally sent. That's look at beautiful. It, look, yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, I wanted to, I did want to ask you a question. I want to play a very quick love map game with you and see if you know some things. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask you three questions. Uh-huh. One will be very easy. The first one's very easy. What is the greatest movie of all time? Oh, of in my opinion? No, for me. The, what does Zach think? Is, what, no, it's not, it's not even what I think. What is Who actually the Roger greatest Rabbit? movie? Of, exactly. Okay. That's right. Okay. Number two. This is fun. When... When people call me the wrong name, what do they call me? Hold on. 
oh, if they're like, man. oh, sorry. Yeah, and then they I mean, say this I'm, name I'm and they assuming go, I mean, Zach. it would be Chris since it's your first name, but I no. think, I don't think it's Chris. I think that it's like, um, if they're going to call you something, it's going to be like Steve. It's Josh. Josh. Interesting. You do look like a Josh. People call me Josh all the time. Yeah. It's like, like it's, it's, I think it's woven into the universe. That's, but remember we did that interview a while back with that lady from, uh, I don't know what she was from, but she called me Josh like the entire first third of the no, interview. No, she didn't. And I was, yeah. We'll and I was like, you back. know what? That's it's funny. okay. I, this happens to me all the time. Don't worry about it. You are just caught up in the, in the universal energy. Yeah. My grandmother used to call me Josh. No. My, yeah. Yeah. My <laughs> French teacher called me Josh. Everyone. I went, I went to an event one time and the guy was like, I was like signing into the event. He was like, H -h -h welcome to the event. Here's your name tag. What's your name? And I said, my name is Zach. And he wrote Josh. <laughs> I'm trying to okay. remember what the two names are that you and you invert. Um, because you have, uh, like you say, uh, almost every time you names. introduce yourself. Yeah. They're girl names mm -hmm. as like, uh, can you give me one of them and I'll see if I can figure out the other one. One of them is Kim. Kim and is it like Ashley or something like that? It's Lisa. Lisa. Kim and Lisa. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Um, here's the other question. Right. This is what I want to know if you really know. What is the one rule in my house that I care about? The one rule? I have one rule in my house that I care about. Like, this is the only thing I don't want you to do. Um, it has to do with the kitchen. I know. It's remember? the dishwasher in the sink. Um, I'm trying to remember what it is. Uh, it has to do with the dishwasher. Mm-hmm. Is it that, is it a way that you, you do the, the dishes? Like you stack no, them in the dishwasher? Don't put my pans in the dishwasher. Don't put your pans in the dishwasher. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was, I mean, I think I was pretty darn close on two out of four of those. Yeah. You did pretty good. I mean, uh, I was just wondering about that because, uh, I asked Sarah, my therapist the other day, I said, do you remember the one thing I care about in my kitchen? And she's like, yeah, don't put your pans in the dishwasher. I was like, right. Do you spend time in therapy talking about that? Sometimes. Yeah. Like it, it really, because everything you. means something. Everything means something. Right. And right it's now not about the pans, maybe it is about the pans. Maybe it's like, no, because right now my family is in revolt privately against me. Yeah. And so they're putting, by the putting pans my in pans the in the dishwasher and I don't know what to do about it because I, but I wanted to be sure that I was clear. So I was asked, I asked my therapist and I asked our mutual friend yeah. and I asked you. And did the mutual friend get it? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So this is a thing for me and now it's changing in my house and I, I don't know how to feel about it exactly. It's like meaning that they're not following the rules. Meaning that they have decided that that rule is no longer relevant. Okay. So I have a question. Now we're getting into some meat here of when you're so clear about <laughs> what your rules are, what your expectation is, whatever it might be. And mm -hmm. it can be so stupid, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't like it when you put my knives in the dishwasher or my pans mm -hmm. in the dishwasher. Or I, it like, is what I it is. Yeah. Like every time you vacuum, I need you to empty out the, the filter, like the, you know, where it collects stuff. Like everybody yeah. has a something. And if you're yeah. really clear and you share with your partner, this is really important to me. And mm -hmm. they have the ability to function on a high level throughout the yep. day in all yep. other aspects, right? We're not you, talking about hold it in here. We're not talking about like right. the eight-year-old who's like right. forgot. Or your 85, you know, Alzheimer's grandparent yeah. that can't remember yeah. your name and thinks it's Josh. Like it's it's your partner. Oh, and she if, was perfectly sane, by the way. <laughs> she was not, she did not have Alzheimer's. She just <laughs> called me the wrong name. Yeah. And you okay. have two, two names. It's either Zach yeah. or it's Chris. Like, yeah. It's never Chris. I've never gone by Chris ever. You it's really not even like been bristle like a at being called Chris. Well, it's just not my name. I, yeah. I think it's weird. My parents named me Christopher Zachary Brittle. Yeah. And then and called you Zach. And they called me Zach. But they spelled Christopher in this really wonky way. Like, like you can't spell it right now. Hold Can on. Can you spell Christopher? Well, there's two ways to spell Christopher. There's the C-H way. Just go ahead. Try and spell my name. Uh, well, I know it's a K because... So uh -huh. is it K-R-I-S-T-O-F-E-R? It's O-F-O-R. O-F-O-R? That's weird. Christopher. I know. For. Every time I ask my parents, I ask my mom about it, like, what did you do that? And their, <laughs> her answer is, we really, really wanted to name you after no one. We didn't want you named after anyone. Mm -hmm. And I was like, cool. I'm just a man with no name yeah, floating around in an island of namelessness. Because things mean things, by the way. <laughs> and I've sp I wrote a paper in my graduate school program about my name and how I was named after nobody. And that Oops. was a, that was this thing. Um, we got to go back to what I was talking about, though. 
Go for we it. squirreled for a second. But what does that mean when it, it, in your relationship, if you have something that you have clearly expressed to your partner, this matters to me, I really want for this to be done in this way or whatever it might be a request. And you mm-hmm. notice that your partner just doesn't do it. They just refuse. Yeah. Well, I actually have two answers to this. Okay. One real, I have two real answers for this. Uh huh. A few years ago, I came home uh, and I opened the dishwasher and my pan was in there. And I looked at my wife and I just gave her this look and I was like, the hell is this? Like, what is this? Why is there a pan in here? And she literally looked at me in the face and she said, I didn't think you would find it. I thought I could get it. I basically, I thought I could do it without you noticing. Right. And I was like, oh, so, okay, cool. You don't like my rule and that's fine. You do your thing. But like you literally, the reason you did it is not because you forgot or because of you like, she just thought, well, this time, this time. I, I was somewhere and I, I, I guess I got up in the morning and I, w- I walked into the kitchen and I was looking for my water yeah. bottle or something. I opened it and there's two pants, two pants in this washer. And this is like three years later. And I feel, cause I feel like I've solved the problem a while back. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, don't do that because I'd like my pants. Please don't put my pants in this washer. Like, yeah. it's just a thing. I'm sorry about that. But like, and also it kind of stinks that you put them in there just thinking that you wouldn't get caught because that's kind of lousy and I don't, but just, could you just not put my pans in there? Like, I just, love that you keep calling them your pans. They, they are my pans. The I, the only, I, I cook most of the dishes and I cook mostly in our yeah. house. So okay. but that's changing. I'll tell you that right now because I opened the dishwasher the other day. There's two pans in there. And I look at her, just look at her with this blank stare. Mm-hmm. And I was like, the hell with like, I just, I didn't even say what the hell is this. I just look at her. I was like, like that. And she goes, I decided I didn't care anymore. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Woof. I was like, I was like, okay. Okay. Well, I guess that's just, uh, I guess. She doesn't uh, care about the pans or she doesn't care about you. Well, she doesn't care about the pans. She's like the pans, like the pans get, they did get cleaner in here. I like it better. It's fine. But I had to decide if she cared about me. Right. I had to like, actually like think through it and go, Okay. Well, you just did uh, the thing that mattered. Like you just decided that what you cared about was more important than what I cared about. Mm -hmm. And we got, listen, this is like so low on the totem bar. However, it does, I think it does speak to a very important thing, which is I have spent a week or more. (laughs) This is about three weeks ago because I talked to Sarah about it two weeks ago. Um, I've spent three weeks at least trying to decide how I'm going to feel about it. Okay. And I, and I, 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 I think roll that's a dice. really funny way to say it though, of trying to decide how I'm going to feel about it because your feelings are going to come up. Like you have feelings. I think it's what you're going to think about your feelings or how you're going to sure. utilize yeah. those yeah, yeah. feelings. Well, and if I use my little like code word that I'm addicted to right now, it's like, what am I going to make up about it? Okay. What am I going to make sure. up? Am I going to make up that she doesn't care mm-hmm. that she doesn't love me, that her priority is, is more important than mine. Yeah. And that she is real. Or do I make up something more benevolent? Like, you know what? Actually doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Hands get clean in the dishwasher and there's nothing wrong with it. And she's probably very right. And, and I'm really glad that she's doing the dishes and that is really good. And I'm, I'm having a harder time making up the second one, but yeah. I'm trying because I feel like that serves me and the relationship better. Yeah. It does. You know, I was talking to uh, some clients recently and I was in, I I think this kind of goes a little bit in the same realm of we only have a certain amount of uh, resistance or the ability to, um, gosh, what is, what is the word I want to use? Resilience. No, not resilience. It's like, um, you know, you go all week long, basically, uh, let's just say like resisting sugar because you're trying to give up sugar. Mm. And Mm -hmm. so when you're spending so much time and energy focused on resisting that sugar, it makes it, you only have like a, a a finite amount of resistance. Is that the word I want to use? What's the word? Yeah, I think it's the word. Um, I think it's, I think it's the word. Okay. I I know what you're trying to say. Yeah. And so if the word pops into my head, I'll interrupt you and tell you you. what I think it is. Uh, And it's always welcome that you interrupt me. And uh, so I was kind of thinking in the same way, like you only have maybe a finite amount of fucks to give, right? About your partner's idiosyncrasies and desires and what they want. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. And so I'm kind of thinking like, she's just sort of decided I don't have the capacity to give 
I- I- anything about the pans because I'm going to care about Zach's emotional needs. I'm going to care about, you know, like showing up for him in other ways. But when it comes to the pans, they're just pans. And so my finite amount of fucks to give is, is, is been tapped into. So okay. that's, that's one sort of story that I'm telling myself, but yeah, I think there should be a trade off though. Okay. Like, like, I think if you're going to be like, no, I, I don't do this thing anymore. Like this isn't working for me. And I get that part, right? People change and, and details change and, and orientation changes and that's all fine. But I think there ought to be like some kind of trade off where you say, Hey, listen, don't worry about it. I'm going to wash the pants. Like, I'll be in charge of the pants forever. Um, you don't even have to worry about it because I don't think I got that part yet. And all I got was I decided this and you know what? I don't mean to throw her back under the bus. I love her so much. We're, we're getting along really well. Um, but this goes back to something that happened when we were, I actually don't know if I can hear this. <laughs> <laughs> I've, you know how many times I have like put my foot in my mouth with this, this, this uh, podcast. It's nice if you air something that you kind of regret a little bit. Um. <laughs> When we were engaged to get married, it was a big deal. We had this whole thing, like with the registry and you pick out your China. Like, did you get China? Did you guys, does China still a no, thing when you um, got married? I got Le Creuset, Le, Le Creuset whatever. Yeah. Got we expensive. got China. We had to like pick out our China pattern and we asked Ooh. for like China sets and stuff. And I picked out this pattern. I was like, I like this pattern. This is the pattern I want. And I was like, literally, babe, you have whatever you want. It's totally fine. But this but is this where China pattern. This is the China pattern that the I hill want. I'm going to die on is this China pattern. Yeah, that, I mean, listen. You can pick the silverware. You can pick the location of the wedding. You can have colors, food, band. Don't care. This is the China that I want. She calls me one day, and we're just like talking about whatever. And she goes, "Yeah, so I ordered this China. It was not the China that I wanted. It was this other China uh-huh. that she wanted." And and I was like, "Wait, what? It's not the China Why? I wanted." She goes, "I just, that, I just, just, this was the one I wanted. This is the one I decided I wanted." I yeah. was like. Oh, so this, so it's the pan thing, but it's 30, 30 years old or 25 years old. Yeah. Like, so I don't know what it is about the dynamic that we created where I just, I sit down and I say, this is the one thing I want. And she goes, okay. Mm-hmm. And then somehow, some way, either, either no before we got married or 25 years after we got married, she says, no, I decided I want yeah. this other thing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Dipsy. Oh, what can a girl say about Dipsy? So have you guys ever picked up like a used romance novel and just held the book at the spine and allowed it to open up on its own? (laughs) Guaranteed the spine is worn to the raciest, most erotic scene in the book. Yes, you found it. Well, Dipsy is like skipping to the good part of a romance novel, except rather than reading, you're listening to the actors' voices play out the scene for you. By the way, this is a little bit of a side note, but did you know that just as men tend to be more visually stimulated, women are actually more auditorily stimulated? Yep, that's a little advice from me. Dipsy is an app. It has hundreds of short, sexy stories that are written by women and for women that act out a variety of spicy, erotic stories, and it's guaranteed to rev you up. So my favorite part of Dipsy is the ability to filter through and find the actors voices that I prefer so my personal favorite is the male British accent and I can also filter through sexual genres that fit my preference on that given day so for listeners of the show Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash mtr so that's 30 days of full access for free when you go to Dipsy it's spelled d-i-p-s-e-a stories.com slash mtr Dipsy stories.com slash mtr i have been so grateful for factor this week exhibit one i have a growing hungry little boy who has taken a liking to eating two dinners one before and one after evening soccer practice look this mama does not have time to cook two meals but i do have time two minutes in fact two minutes to pop a factor meal into the microwave and best part of all i know that my son isn't filling up on empty carbs and processed sugar today he had cheesy bacon ranch shredded chicken and broccoli super mom heck yes i am okay exhibit b i have exactly 10 minutes between clients on busy days and a factor meal between clients is one of my true luxuries. 
Okay, one more because I'm seriously obsessed with this meal delivery service. My mom, a thriving 65 year old woman who lives alone, she complains that cooking for herself just isn't any fun and grocery shopping is such a pain in the booty, especially now that it's getting colder. So I've been slipping her a factor meal whenever she visits and she's now the newest convert. So if you're a busy mom or a solo senior, a lazy luncher, or just trying to streamline your life, please check out Factor Meals. You can head on over to factormeals.com slash MTR50 and use the code MTR50 to get 50% off. That code is MTR50 at factormeals.com slash MTR50 to get 50% off. You could be the key to helping change lives. Join a clinical trial with Nucleus Network in Minneapolis and be a part of groundbreaking research. Nucleus Network has been conducting clinical research studies for over 15 years. Right now, Nucleus Network is looking for people with moderate to severe kidney impairment to participate in their upcoming clinical studies. If eligible, your participation could help advance research of investigational medications that are being developed to treat a variety of medical conditions. Nucleus Network is offering compensation ranging from two to $7,000 for study participation time. If you or someone you know has kidney disease, check your eligibility for Nucleus Network's upcoming studies now at NucleusNetwork.com. Your participation matters. Learn more about Nucleus at N-U-C-L-E-U-S-Network.com. Again, NucleusNetwork.com. Okay, we got to get off this subject because, I mean, it's interesting, right? But well, here's the interesting part. This is the interesting part. Okay. I am going to talk to Rebecca about it before this podcast comes out. I promise. Okay. okay. Uh, probably in Ireland because I learned this thing that I think is actually really valuable. And, and uh, it's, it's, it's a version of softened startup. Okay. So I can, I can pivot real hard into like a thing that I think would be helpful. Okay. Soft and startup is I feel about what and I need. Right. So in this case, it's I feel sad about you washing my pants and I need you not to wash my pants. <laughs> or I feel I feel I feel uh, I feel disregarded or disrespected. Also, things I don't actually think are great feeling words, but this is like just sick with mm-hmm. me. When you put my pants in the dishwasher unapologetically and I need you to know how I feel. Okay. There's a there's a newer version that actually comes from Terry's stuff that I really mm-hmm. like actually better. And it's got two extra steps that I think are pretty important. So you call this like the feedback wheel or something like that? It is. It's a feedback wheel. Yeah. Yeah. The feedback wheel. And it's number one is, is now a good time? Right. So I say to Rebecca, I say, hey, is now a good time to talk about something that's kind of been on my mind Mm -hmm. and that is, I don't really know what to do with. And she Mm -hmm. goes, yeah, now's a good time. Yeah. Did we talk, did we talk about this already here on the podcast? Probably, but we have people that have, have probably, this is their first time they're ever listening to this episode and they're like, what is this couple what the heck droning is going on, on about? Yeah. By the way, we're not a real couple. Um, yeah. We are a couple of boneheads that like to talk <laughs> at each other. Um, okay. I just, I want to comment on this is that I love asking for permission. Um, yeah. I find so many people start important conversations at nine o'clock at night um, where they're like you said, if I want to fail, if I want to really screw a conversation yeah. up, I wait until Rebecca's in the other room and I yeah. yell across the room and I'm like, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So asking for permission is great. It prepares your partner to show up for you as a listener and it allows them to sort of have the buy-in like, yes, I'm ready for you. And if you say, yes, I'm ready to have this conversation show up as your best self. If you can't show up as your best self with empathy, with understanding, with caring, with compassion, all of that, then go eat a sandwich, have a nap, come back. Well, yeah, this exactly happened. We, we learned this together, the feedback wheel together. And she, she tried it with me one time. She goes, Hey, is now a good time? I want to talk to you about this thing. And I was kind of hot about it. And I, and I actually said, no, no, it's not a good time. Like, I don't think I'm ready to receive any input from you right now. So Uh let me go ride my bike, take a shower. And then we can talk about it when I have my head on straight. She yeah. goes, okay, great. Yeah. So, because if we had talked about it, if she goes, well, actually I decided it is a good time. And so we're going to talk about it. It would not have gone well. Right. It would have gone really bad. Yeah. So. Step um, one, ask, is now, is now a, good a good time? Is now a good time. Yep. Step two is also part of Startup and Startup. It's, but it starts with what happened. Okay. What happened was I walked into the kitchen. I opened the dishwasher. I saw the pans there. I looked at you. I heard you say, I don't care anymore. Um, and 
Th- that's what happened. Do you remember that, Reb? Do you remember that when that happened? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember that. That happened. Okay. Mm-hmm. Did I mis- did I misconstrue that? No, that's exactly what happened. Really important, I guess, in this case, at a teaching moment to talk about what happened for you, right? Like right. this happened for me. Yeah. It's not, and this then you were a dick and then you messed yes. up and then you yes. gave me a dirty look. It's no, it's like, this is, this is the event I'm trying to describe. Uh-huh. Are you going into your interpretation at that point? Are you, or are you just giving facts? Are you saying I open the dishwasher? No, I, I think it's I more like recalling the moment. Okay. I think it's more like, but this from is your the, point of view. Yeah. Uh, I like the phrase journalistically, right? Journalistically. This is, this is what went it's down. Objective, right. You're not me. adding your subjective experience into it. Yeah. Okay. That comes the next step. The oh. next step is here's what I made up about it. Ah. Uh. When I saw that I made up that you didn't love me. And that what I wanted didn't matter. And that, that, and that, that I, that if, it, even if I asked for what I want, I wasn't going to get it. And I also made that up about the China from the, our wedding. And Ooh. it made me think that this has been the same. I made up that nothing has changed in 25 years. Okay. I have a question about that yeah. because I try really hard. And if my clients are listening, you know who you are, where I go, whoa, 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 whoa. We cannot kitchen sink this. We cannot Mm -hmm. throw in other events just to add more information. Like we, we kind of like start to stack our Mm -hmm. uh, case by providing evidence of how we've been wronged in the past and how this is Mm -hmm. a pattern. And I find that so overwhelming. And it's also really tough to stay present and non-defensive when your partner starts stacking events against you. So the fact that you said, I made this up and then you added the China and I can just hear Mm -hmm. myself as a listener, I would be like, like, oh, he's bringing that up. That was 38 years ago. <laughs> and yeah. it wasn't, but I'm just trying to make yeah. it sound old. No, no, no. I get it. No, but, and I think, but I think that there's a big difference, right? It's what I made up. I said, babe, you need to know what I made up. Okay. Babe, you need to know that this is where my brain went. My brain went all to these places and it, and it went, it catastrophized. Mm-hmm. I went to, I went to catastrophe. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I think it's, I think you're right. Like you cannot sit here and go, well, you did it yesterday, which, and you also did it two years ago and you also did it 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. So you're never going to change that. That's less about what you made up and more about like, um, my desire to, to, to litigate or to wound. Right. 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 So I think again, the spirit of the feedback wheel is a, is now a good time. Right. B here's the thing that happened. Mm-hmm. Oh, and Hey, by the way, here's what I made up about that. My you need to know about yeah. what my imagination does. Okay. Where my brain goes. Okay. So it's, I feel about what, and I need is the softened startup and the Gottman method. So we've talked about what happened. Right. This is the about what part. Then they added this part called, this is what I made up. And then this next part is, and here's how I felt about that. Not here's what I felt about the pants. Here's what I felt about what I made up. Okay. What I felt about what I made up was sad, despairing, lonely. Um, I felt defensive. I felt, you know. And I think what that does is it puts a gap between the, your partner's behavior and your feeling. Okay. So if I say I'm mad because you put the pans in the dishwasher, that's different than I'm, I'm mad because I made up a story about our relationship yeah. because I saw some pans in the dishwasher. Mm-hmm. There's a, there's an extra step. There's a buffer. Mm-hmm. There's a, there's a new thing. And so I don't know if that, what that does for you, but like, I know that, that the concept of that for me helps me feel less defensive about the situation, right? I can, I can actually go, oh, that's a horrible story that you made up. Yeah. Oh, that's gross. That, but that's a, that is a practiced response because you're really good at defensiveness and you, you know how to overcome defensiveness. But I, I mean, I had this in my, in my office multiple times this week where the response is, I'm going to diminish or dismiss or talk you out of your feelings because they're wrong. So now I'm going to prove to you that how you're feeling, the story that Mm -hmm. you made up is wrong and inaccurate. And let me tell you why it's wrong and inaccurate. So, um, yes, I think absolutely the, what you're doing is you are being so calculated and gentle in the way that you're addressing this issue. But I can also see that those of you that are really good at defensiveness. No, uh, I would say who are really bad at defensiveness. <laughs> who are really bad at defensiveness. Okay. Yeah. Because um, the part of me that's really good at defensiveness, by the way, would say, yeah, it probably is wrong. Mm-hmm. That story I made up probably is, probably isn't true mm-hmm. and real. It's just the story I made up. Yeah. And 
I, I, you got to know that it exists and that little tiny meaningless things like pans of the dishwasher flare up a very big monster in me that, that, that I have, I need help taming. Mm -hmm. And that's actually the last part. The last part is, can you help me out? Okay. Can you help me out by telling me that I matter? Can you, can you help me out by telling me that my opinion is valid, that you care about it? Mm -hmm. Maybe you could help me out by not putting the pans in the dishwasher, but but maybe you could just like remind me or give me some insight into how your brain works because I need another story. I need help with another story. Okay. You know, Ooh, so it's tricky. Though. I feel about what I need yeah. and then hold on. I'll just, and yeah. then I want you to go. Then it's, uh, is now a good time. Right. Here's what happened. Here's what the story I made up mm -hmm. is next. Here's how I felt about the story I made up. Mm -hmm. Can you help me with that story? Okay. That's the, that's the path that I really like in this. Yeah. That's a, just a little bit different because there's some, there's some buffer room in there and there's actually room for conversation and discovery. So. Okay. So I want you to be a little clearer about, can you help me with that story? Because what I was just mentioning is that it, it is very easy. It's like, yes, I can help you with that story. Your story is a, a load of crap. Get over you, it. Yeah. Get over it. You made <laughs> it up. It's that is not accurate or true. I can see that. Can you help me with the story? It just almost gives permission to a defensive listener to poke holes in the story and to be, and also to like, you know, like have their, their moment on the mm -hmm. stand of mm -hmm. here's all the reasons why your story is wrong, which mm -hmm. is not helpful. So what is it that the listener should be doing? Like validating your feelings? The, gosh, okay. So I'm the person who's used the feedback wheel, right? Or I'm the person yeah. who's used this process you, and what yeah. is the listener supposed to do? You're so what do I want pans. from, what do I want from Reb basically? Right. Um, I want her to listen to my story. And even if she thinks it's cockamamie or right. even if she goes to like embarrassment or shame, I want her to go, ah, whoa, that's, that's a lot. That's a, uh, that's a big story. Like that, there's a lot there that maybe I didn't realize. Yeah. Thank you for telling me. Yeah. Now, if she's inclined to say, Zach, it's not a big deal. Th th why do you care? Uh, I might say, because I'm really good at being defensive. I might say, I don't know. I actually don't know why I care. I just know that I do care. Right. And that the story, I need help with the story. So she goes, okay, fine. How can I help you with the story? And then okay. I go, well, I mean, you could, I mean, number one, you could not put my pans in the dishwasher. Number two, if you're going to do that, and I, I've actually started putting the pans in the dishwasher my little silent revolt, you know, to kind of just concede that I lost this battle. But can you just, can you, can you give me a trade-off? Can you give me something to balance this out? Or can you just reassure me that like, that, that I matter to you and that my opinion matters to you? And let me say as an aside, Rebecca has been working on this like a champ and she's actually doing a really great job. Yeah. This is an isolated sort of outlier thing. Um, but my, but my brain definitely did run away with like, well, I guess I, I guess I don't, I guess it doesn't matter mm -hmm. what I want or what I think. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't serve the relationship. And so it's my responsibility to sit down and say so. Hmm. You know, what just popped up to me is that, it, pausing long enough is to say, when did you decide, Zach, that respect and being cared for was represented in these pans? Well, like great along, question. Right. I would love that question. Yeah. Like where? I did mean, that... that's a great question from you. It's a great question from my therapist. <laughs> I know it's not going to happen. If Rebecca asked me that question, I would be like, "That's actually a really good question. Yes. Thank you so much for for trying to understand, for trying to peel that layer back with me." Mm -hmm. You know, what does the pan um, represent? What does the China represent? What is, you know, like, what are these small things that your partner is asking you to do? And you're either agreeing to do it. Like I remember folding laundry uh, for my husband. So I took over laundry and I started doing the laundry and he goes, I, I actually really like it when my shirts are folded like this. And I wanted to be like, are you kidding me right now? Like, be grateful that your clothes are being washed and put back into your drawers and don't have an opinion. But he, oh, it was the socks. Um, I have a military way. If you have ever been a like an army brat or whatever, like there's a special way that uh, people do socks in the military. They like roll them, roll them into each other. Do you do your mm. socks that way? 
Uh, no. Okay. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I doubt I, it. Like people Not who on purpose. have been in the military or their family has like taught them how to do these things. They're like, yes, I know the role. I didn't realize that that came from the military, but anyway. Um, so he asked me to do it and I just, I, I should have paused when I remember him saying it like three or four times that I was not doing the socks the way he wanted them done. Mm-hmm. What does this represent to you? Because mm-hmm. it doesn't make much sense to me. Like, what is the story that you're making up about what happens? Like, what is, what does this represent? Because oftentimes people understand, they're like, I don't get it. I'm going to dismiss the socks. It doesn't, it's stupid, right? It's socks, it's pans, it's whatever. But it's like, but it, it, you feel strongly about it. So help me understand, like, what does this represent? And if he says respect, care, when did you decide that this is, you know, that the, that the socks represent care or attention or affection or respect? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And mm. and I also sort of am like, I mean, I think honestly, sometimes my answer is, I don't really know. Yeah. I don't really know why I care about this. I know that I need a little part of the corner corner of the world that I feel have I have some influence or control over. Mm-hmm. And in a, in a space uh, like my home where there's a lot of chaos and I'm trying really hard to respect and, and, and appreciate the needs and wants of my three wives... I picked something kind of benign that felt like mine, you know, Mm. and that felt simple enough. And so, um, but I don't really know. I don't know where that comes from. Certainly could. I mean, I'm going to see Sarah this afternoon, so maybe I'll talk to her about the pants again. (laughs) Um, But yeah, it's an interesting one. And I think it's worth uh, exploring in a way that kind of allows you to create some distance between the, 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 the emotion of it. Because I think you're right. You're going to feel what you feel. And then the question is, what am I going to do with what I feel? Am I right. going to am I going to have a thoughtful conversation with my wife or am I going to lash out and go dark and decide that nothing matters and I'm just going to throw my hands up and yeah. not care? Yeah. Um, I'd rather do the first than the <laughs> second. And that's that's a learning that's on the learning curve for me, for sure. Yeah. Well, this has been an interesting conversation, as you put it uh, in the intro. <laughs> It's pretty fun that you kind of came up with your own intro tag. Um, but all right, well, let's land this plane because we have an interview to do with Dr. Karen and she's going to be on the podcast. At no, some we already point. did it. Oh, we already did it. We already interviewed Dr. Karen <laughs> and Zach's already <laughs> back from Ireland. I am. I am where I had a lovely conversation with my bride about mm-hmm. China and pans and yeah. uh, how we were going to tackle the next 25 years of marriage together. So, you know, what's really funny is that... Um, if you were to bring this up, this whole, like, you go to your best friend and you say, this is really driving me nuts. Rebecca's putting my pans in the dishwasher. Yeah. Uh, you might get sucked in and try and solve the problem. Right. And say yeah. like, Hey Zach, why don't you have your own pans and put them somewhere like above, like yeah. inaccessible to your three Label wives. them. <laughs> right. Z, big old Z. Like don't touch these pans. That's yeah. right. They're mine. You can try and solve the problem, but underneath all of it, is it going to grow you closer or is it going to allow her to like develop some empathy and some compassion for you without having this conversation? Probably not. Um, but you know, like pick your battles, decide what's solvable, decide what you want to like dive into and discover. There's some interesting, interesting yeah. food for thought. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let's, let's land and then we'll, we'll interview Dr. Karen. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Marriage Therapy Radio. Hey, uh, we have already received a bunch of emails from folks that are asking about when our next intensive is coming up. So we have our fall intensive. It's coming up on October 20th and 21st. You can still register for that. But because you're asking for the next dates, I want to let you know that if you go to marriagetherapyradio.com, you'll see that there's the series as well as the weekend intensives. And we have put on there our winter, our spring, and then our next fall. It's a full year from now. So you can put them on the calendar, uh, register for the one that you like. You can always roll a registration into the next one if you're unable to do that. But I do want to make sure that you secure your seat because we do have a limited number of folks that we will let into these workshops. Thanks for all of your time and attention, making your relationship better today than it was yesterday. 
you could be the key to helping change lives. Join a clinical trial with Nucleus Network in Minneapolis and be a part of groundbreaking research. Nucleus Network has been conducting clinical research studies for over 15 years. Right now, Nucleus Network is looking for people with moderate to severe kidney impairment to participate in their upcoming clinical studies. If eligible, your participation could help advance research of investigational medications that are being developed to treat a variety of medical conditions. Nucleus Network is offering compensation ranging from two to $7,000 for study participation time. If you or someone you know has kidney disease, check your eligibility for Nucleus Network's upcoming studies now at NucleusNetwork.com. Your participation matters. Learn more about Nucleus at N-U-C-L-E-U-S Network.com. Again, NucleusNetwork.com.